Now, next, let us move on to the type 10 problem. That is nothing but distribution of non-distinct objects. These kind of problems are direct application of beggar's method. Let us see how these questions can be done. Now, this next question is extremely simple. What we can do in this 2023 question is, let us put the values here, substitution. So, in place of x, we can put capital X plus 1. In place of y, small y, we can put nothing but capital Y plus 3. And instead of this small z, we can put capital Z plus 4. And if I do so, capital X plus 1, capital Y plus 3, capital Z plus 4, this will be adding up to 21 if I put it here. So capital X plus capital Y plus capital Z is 3 plus 1, 4 plus 4, 8. So 21 minus 8. And if I subtract 8 from here, this becomes nothing but 13. So once I get 13 from here, my job is very simple. I can apply Vegas method. So 13 plus 3 minus 1, C 13. And this comes out to be nothing but 16 minus 1. So 15, C 13. That is equivalent to 15 C 2. And now this can be written as nothing but 15 into 14 and divide by 2. So 15 into 7. That comes out to be nothing but 105. In this 2023 question, there is a very important word that you might miss out. X and Y are distinct non-negative integers. So both the words are important. Distinct also and non-negative also. So basically, we are looking for whole numbers. Now, this is in the purview of Becker's formula. So very good. But this is not in the purview. So we need to isolate these solutions from the total solutions. If I write my total solutions for x, y plus z is equal to 15, where nothing but x, y, z belongs to whole number. The answer is nothing but 15 plus 3 minus 1, c 15. And this, if you simplify, comes out to be 136. Now, these are my total solutions where some of them, 2 will be same, 3 will be same. So, out of this, let us subtract those solutions in which all are same and exactly 2 same. These solutions we need to subtract. Now, see, all same is very simple to find. So, let us first find when all will become same. So, what we can do is in this equation, x plus y plus z is equal to 15. We can put simply x is equal to y is equal to z. So, thrice of x is equal to 15, x comes out to be 5. So, you can see there is only one such solution. In the second part, what I can do is I can try and figure out when 2 are same. Now, 2 can be same. So, either x and y can be same, y and z or z and x. These three scenarios may apply. So, I am taking this scenario and I will multiply my answer by 3. So, if I take this, then twice of x plus z would be equal to nothing but 15. Now, we can see that in this, we can put x is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. It will get satisfied. You can see that there are total 8 solutions, but we cannot take all of these 8 because one of these solutions is 5 that we got earlier for which all the 3 solutions will become same. So, we need to subtract that one. So, my answer comes out to be 7. So, there are total 7. So, now let us put the values here. So, if I put my values, 136 is fine, but this one also needs to be subtracted and then 3 into 7. So, 7 was for this one case. We have two more such cases. So, it will become 21. And if I do so, my answer comes out to be 114. That is nothing but option D. If I look into this 2022, it is a very interesting question. What they are saying is there are 16 identical cubes out of which 11 are blue and 5 are red. This is what they have given to us. We have to arrange them in a row so that between any two red cubes, there should be at least two blue, blue cubes. So, what we can do is if I write this R, R, red, red and red five reds in a row so you can see that between them and around them there are going to be six gaps let us see that in this first gap we are filling x1 cubes in the second one x2 cubes in the third one x3 cubes similarly x4 x5 and x6 so these are nothing but the blue cubes that you are that we are filling in this position arranging in this position now the condition is that for this x2 to x5 x3 
x4 and x5 this value should be greater than equal to 2 so now let us write it down so in mathematical terms so this is the conceptualization in first part in the mathematical terms it looks like x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5 plus x6 should be equal to 11 my x1 can take any value greater than equal to 0 for x2 x3 x4 and x5 it needs to be greater than equal to 2 and for x6 again greater than equal to 0 now this can again be in turn solved using beggar's method so what we can do in the third step is we can do substitution so x1 and x6 is fine but for x2 we can put it equal to capital x2 plus 2 x3 we can put it equal to capital x3 plus 2 so on and so far till x5 capital x5 plus 2 see why are we doing this the reason is that beggar's method only will give us answer for whole numbers now when you are writing greater than equal to it is not a whole number so we are doing this substitution to make it to that whole number level so now once you do that what you have is a small x1 plus capital x2 plus 2 plus capital x3 plus 2 plus capital x4 plus 2 plus capital x5 plus 2 plus x6 is equal to 11 and if I simplify, I get an expression x1 plus capital X2 plus capital X3 plus capital X4 plus capital X5 plus a small x6 is equal to nothing but 3. Because this 2, 2, 2 and 2 will become 8 and right hand side becomes 3. So once you have got this, now we can apply Beggar's theorem. Why? Because now all the variables that we are talking about are whole numbers. So my answer comes out to be nothing but 6 plus 3 minus 1 c3 that is nothing but 8 c3 and that is nothing but 56. So important thing while applying Beggar's theorem is it is only applicable for whole numbers. So if whole numbers is not given in the current equation put some substitution and bring it to that point. Now this 2021 is a very typical problem a classroom illustration. Now in this question what they are saying is number of positive integral now this you need to observe sometimes they will write integral and then the answer will change of x by z such that x into y into z equal to 24. So the method of this question goes like this. First you will in the first step you will write the prime factorization of 24 and that is nothing but 3 into 8 or 2 cube into 3 raised to the power 1. See now if I am writing x what can happen in x we will have some power of 2 let us say that power as a1 and some power of 3 let us say that as b1. Similarly we will have y is equal to 2 raised to the power a2 into 3 raised to the power b2 and similarly we will have z that is nothing but 2 raised to the power a3 into 3 raised to the power b3. Now if I multiply all of this see I am only taking these two prime numbers because if there are more then in prime factorization that will get reflected. So if I am multiplying x y z let us see what am I getting. So I get 2 raised to the power a1 plus a2 plus a3 3 raised to the power b1 plus b2 plus b3 and now they have given that this is equal to 24 and that is again in turn 2 raised to the power 3 into 3 raised to the power 1. So if I compare this in the third step something very significant happens. What I get is nothing but the value of a1 plus a2 plus a3. This should be equal to 3. And we have a condition and b1 plus b2 plus b3 this should be equal to 1. So our answer is nothing but multiplication of these two. So if I solve it further this comes out to be nothing but. 3 plus 3 terms on the left hand side minus 1 c3 and the answer for the next one comes out to be nothing but 3 plus 1 minus 1 c1 and the answer becomes nothing but 5 c3 into 3 c1 5 c3 if I simplify becomes 5 into 4 by 2 and 3 this comes out to be nothing but 30 and that is nothing but option 4. Now let us look into this question of J2022. Now in this question specifically we will have to use multinomial theorem to get to the answer. The reason is that there are multiple cases that are getting formed. Now let us see. So question says that there are 30 identical candies to be given to 4 children C1, C2, C3, C4. And what they are saying is C2 gets at least 4 and at most 7. C3 gets at least 2 and at most 6. See whenever the question is lot of modification going on. In this scenario, only multinomial will make sense because your calculation thinking everything will get satisfied. 
So let us start with this question. So what I can say is, if I am writing C1 is the candy received by children 1, then children 2, then children 3, then children 4, it is equal to 30. Now the conditions are C1 can lie between 0 and 30. But for C2, there is a condition, it needs to lie between 4 and 7. C3 again could lie between 2 and 6. And C4 again would lie between nothing but 0 and 30. Now using these conditions and this statement, if I write the multinomial theorem, so this is the first part, second step now we are doing. So in the second step, what we can say is, uh, the variation of C1 can be from x raised to the power 0, x raised to the power 1, up till x raised to the power 30. It can get 30 chocolates. The second one, again, x raised to the power 4, 5, 6 and 7. The next part, if I see, the variation will be from x raised to the power 2, x raised to the power 3, 4, 5, 6 and if I multiply the last part will again start from x raised to the power 0, 1, 2, 3 and x raised to the power 30. What I want is coefficient of x raised to the power 30 in this. This is what I want. So if I have this, now let us try and solve this statement in the third part. So if I take first and third, they are same. And if I apply GP, it becomes 1 minus x raised to the power 31 by 1 minus x whole square. The second that I have written, I can write the sum as x raised to the power 4, 1 minus x raised to the power 4 by 1 minus x. And the third, I can write it as nothing but x raised to the power 2 into 1 minus x raised to the power 5 by 1 minus x. And what we want is coefficient of x raised to the power 30 in this. See now here, if you carefully observe, what you will be able to see is there is this x raised to the power 4 here, 3 here. So from the remaining terms, the contribution should be nothing but x raised to the power 24. So what I want is out of 1 minus x raised to the power 31 whole square, 1 minus x raised to the power 4, 1 minus x raised to the power 5, and 1 minus x raised to the power minus 4. The contribution should be x raised to the power 24. This is the coefficient that we want. In the next part, now we can see that this can only contribute x raised to the power 0 because second power would be x raised to the power 31 and that will exceed 24. So this we do not want. Rest of the things, if I multiply these two parts, what I am getting is nothing but 1 minus x raised to the power 4 minus x raised to the power 5 plus x raised to the power 9 into 1 minus x raised to the power minus 4. In this contribution of coefficient of x raised to the power 24. And if I further simplify it, from the first term, I will have x raised to the 1 minus x raised to the power minus 4. Second one, x raised to the power 1 minus x raised to the power minus 4. Third term, x raised to the power 5 into 1 minus x raised to the power minus 4. And plus x raised to the power 9, 1 minus x raised to the power minus 4. Out of this, what I want is coefficient of x raised to the power 24. From the first part, if I write it down, it comes out to be 24 plus 4 minus 1 C 24. From the next part, a minus will come. See, 4 is already gone. So, we will want 20. So, 20 plus 4 minus 1 C 20. Third part, x raised to the power 5 is already gone. So, what we are left is 19 plus 4 minus 1 C 19. And last part, again x raised to the power 9, we have to take away from 24. So, 15 plus 4 minus 1 C 15. If you simplify this, the answer that you get is nothing but D option, that is nothing but 430. If you like this video, you will also like Pragby's unique approach to teaching students or guiding students for the last mile journey. So if you are a student who has been preparing for two years and going to write this exam in 2024, this is one of the best ways and platforms that you can prepare with. Unlike other crash courses who focus on teaching 100% syllabus in just 2-3 to three months, which a student took 2 years to prepare, we have a different way to approach the problem. This process works on 3 very specific steps. In step 1, we start from you. What exact preparation have you done in the last 2 years, last 1 year, last few months? And what is the minimum amount of effort, areas, concepts and problems that required to be prepared to get a very good college from JE means? In step 2, 
based on this customized plan that was prepared based on your strength and weaknesses and the minimum path of least resistance that you can take to get into a very good college we align you a one on one faculty a faculty who's going to teach you as a student keeping your needs into mind where you are getting stuck in a topic what kind of problems you cannot solve and how to solve those problems in a very efficient and smart manner and convert that topic into tangible marks and jeans in step 3 we attach you to a test series a testing platform where you can test yourself for each and every topic that you are preparing you can write full syllabus test and get an understanding that how this program is working for you wherein the faculties which can again sit with you and customize the plan based on your needs so that your score is getting maximized in jee means exam using this program ashish was able to maximize his score in jee means and jee advance and was able to get into iit madras mechanical in just a matter of 3 months If you are one of those students who think that he has got the potential, who can make it, and he wants to have a smart and efficient approach at this point of time, which can maximize his or her result in JEE MS exam, you can apply for this program in the link given in the description, and somebody from my team will get in touch with you and help you out. See you until next time.